Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about creating our first hazard or obstacle. In this case, it's going to be a car that uh, or another vehicle that is going to intentionally try to kill our frog and take away one of his lives. So in order to do that, we can come down here to this area here where there's a little kitty cat button, which is for adding new things. You can click the search if you want, but I'm just going to click right on the kitty cat. And I'm going to choose a random vehicle. If you want, you can search through the list. I'm just going to come here and type in car, and it gives me a number of, of short list items. I'll choose the green convertible, and I can put it down into one of my lanes. And I do like to change these things, so I'm just quickly going to change its color to, um, say, red. As long as you're using the black arrow tool here, you can change all kinds of things. Um, I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Once you have the vehicle and you've kind of adjusted the costume however you want, um, the first thing we want to do is we want to make it appear like it's kind of just appearing onto the screen. And so if you grab the front tire area or the front bumper area, you just kind of slide it backwards. If you try and drag it with your mouse over here, it's just going to go back to its original position. But if you um, can kind of do it this way, it's sort of going to be like appearing onto the screen. If your vehicle is way too big for your lane, uh, then the easiest thing to do is just come down here to the size and you can resize it. So let's say I want to size it to 75%. Oh, sorry. Try that again. 75. Oh, that didn't work either. Okay. 75. There we go. And then when I click away, it turns down to a smaller size and I can just back it up a little more. So I've got the front tire showing here. I've clicked on the front tire and moved it to an adult position. And you'll see here that it has numbers. So the X and the Y position are right here. So it has negative 257 for me as an X and negative 87 for a Y. And if I was to move it along here, you can see that the X number changes as I move it along. Um, and so that's just keeping track of the how far it's sliding. Whereas the Y value really isn't changing a whole lot because I'm mostly trying to keep it at the same height off of, this, off of the bottom of the screen. So that's just a little quick um, demonstration of X and Y values for you. So I'm gonna put it here so it's ready to go. And then, so at the very beginning of the game, I want it to st always start there. So I'm going to grab this go to X, Y, bring it over here. For some reason, it's zoomed way out. So let me zoom that back in again so it's a little easier to see. There we go. Um, and you can see this negative 257, negative 89 is exactly the same as the numbers here, negative 257, negative 89. I don't have to type those in, but I can type them in if I want. So for instance, if I don't want negative 89, let's say I want negative 90, just for a nice quick number, I can easily type that in. And now it's going to go directly to that location. If I don't believe that, just move it somewhere else and just click on that one time and you'll see that it immediately goes back to the position, sort of activates it and goes back to that position. So at the beginning of the game, we're going to start with a green flag. So of course, we're going to start with a green flag. And then we're going to do a whole series of actions that come after that. So we need a forever. And I'm just going to save an if for later on so we can figure that out. Um, and then the, the, what we want it to do is we want it to move. So you'll recall that we use this change X by and change Y by. In this case, we're going to change X. So as I demonstrated, it's just going to go straight across. So I'm going to click a change X by. And at the beginning of the game, we really want it to go nice and slow. So I'm going to change that number to 3 instead of 10. 10 is fine, but 3 is just going to make it so much easier for people to win. And when people win, they feel like playing again. It's sort of the, the game uh, mantra, the game experience. Um, and then just before we go any further, I'm going to grab another go to X, Y and just sort of store it over here for later so that those numbers are already set for me to go. So let's give this part here a test. These num these little blocks of code over here, they won't do anything, but this one will when I click the green flag. You'll see it drives across. It drives across nice and slow. It's not going to make it too complicated. And then uh, for some reason, it just sort of gets stuck. So Scratch doesn't want it disappearing off the screen so you never find it again, or at least it's going to try not to. Um, but it sort of gets stuck there. And what we want to do is instead of creating thousands of cars and trucks and scooters and bicycles or whatever else going across the screen, we want the same car to kind of come back to the start and drive all over again. And what, what we can do is we can change the costume of it. So it's, it's, it's the same car, but um, a different costume. We can do that later on with fancy code. But for right now, we just want it to go back to the start and drive again and go back to the start and drive again. So this if is going to come in handy when we do that. We want to say if it gets to a certain point on the X line, so as these numbers are going up, then we want it to go back to the start. Okay. And in order to do that, you'll notice it's got a diamond shape. And there's a couple of places where you can find diamond shapes, but we want to go to our green operators area. 
And we're going to grab this very first one here. And the first one has the mouth pointing um, back towards the first area. So th if this number is greater than that number, then it's going to go back to the start. Okay, and we can put that into our if here. And then um, what we want to do is we want to know if the x value or the x position of the car is greater than this number way over here. So for instance, if I was to hit the green flag and just let it go, then at some point it's going to get stuck. You can see the X numbers here just really going up really fast. So it gets to 278. So as long, let's just back it up a tiny bit. So, oh, sorry, I have to click the stop sign first. If we back it up a little tiny bit, let's say I wanted to get that far and then teleport back. So that's 254. I'm going to move it up to 255. I could even go as far as 260. Um, so, and let's just say that. So if the X position of the car is greater than 260. Let's just try that for now. So this is where you can really experiment different sizes of vehicles. Like if it's a really small motorcycle, that number might have to be closer to 250 or 240. Um, and then how do we sense what the X position is? So this is the big question of what, what roundish part of code should go in there. So these are clearly not round shapes. So it gives us an indication that the square shapes are not going to fit inside this sort of oval shape there. But these ones down here at the bottom do. So once again, I really am only caring about X right now. I'm not caring about Y or direction. So I'm going to put the X position sort of in that circle. You can see it sort of highlights it. So yes, I want it to go into this one. So if the X position is greater than 260, then go back to the start and do it all over again. So let's put that in here. So it's now part of our big code base and we can click the green flag. So our car is going to drive across. You can see the X numbers going up really fast. And then all of a sudden it gets to the end and it magically teleports back. Okay. Now you didn't believe me before when I said, well, we could just use a costume and do it something differently. So I'm going to prove to you just how easy that is. So I'm going to go to the costumes area. You see, there's only one costume right now. I can really quickly just duplicate that. You could go and find a whole nother costume, but this time I'm just going to change them to uh, blue. And just so you can see that it is the same car, it's going to go blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. And in order to do that in code, I can go to the purple looks tab and I can just say next costume. So every time it gets to the end, it's going to go back to the beginning and change its costume and it'll just keep flipping back and forth. So now when I click the green flag, it goes across as blue. And then the next time it's going to come across as red. And again, it will go back to blue. You want you can create green and yellow and all kinds of stuff. The other thing you could have done was you could have gone to costumes and come down to this little kitty cat button and say, I want a whole new costume. I could type in car again. Oops, type in car. And this time I'm going to get, uh, I'll choose, choose a bus instead. Okay, so it's going to eventually add my bus in here. I can go back to the blue car and say, no, thanks, no more blue car. So I'm just going to go back and forth between being a bus and being a car. And when I click the green flag, you can see I come across here as a bus. It's a very large bus. Um, and then when I get to the end, it comes back as a car. Now, sometimes that bus will be too big or too small, and I might have to change this code from 260 to another number. So if it gets stuck over there, uh, let me just do another costume change really quickly. So goodbye, bus. We're going to go get the motorcycle this time. Um, oh, no, that's not, there's no motorcycle there. Um, bike. There we go. So there's a motorcycle. So we're going to add this one. Wait a second and it will show up. It's going to be quite a bit smaller. So let's click the green flag and see if the motorcycle is going to get stuck or if it's going to go all the way to the end and make it there. Oh, it did make it all the way to the end. So I didn't have to change my code with that one either. Oh, well, I tried to demonstrate that. But so this is where if it goes, if it gets stuck at the end, just make that number smaller, like 250 or something. Okay. So this is our first car. We've got it moving. Yay. It's awesome. And now we can click stop. If you need to click save now, please remember to click save now. And then you're ready to create the second vehicle, which we're going to do in our next video. Okay. Hope your project is coming along really nicely. We'll talk to you in the next video.